My name's Jim Doyle. I live in Rideau Ferry, Ontario, and this is my 1962 Kenworth. Model 923. It's a Canadian Kenworth built in Vancouver in 1962, of course. The truck started its life belonging to a guy that was ordered for a fellow named Evans, who owned a company called Evans & Son Bulldozing in Dease Lake, which is above the 60th parallel. That's important to know because the truck was able to be ordered with no speedometer. And so here we are between somewhere between five and 10 million miles later, and there is still no speedometer in this truck. <laughs> yeah, so it's a pretty neat truck. It's, uh, and now it has a 400 Cummins, uh, 15 over, new way air ride on uh, 355 rears. It's a 246 inch wheelbase day cap. So Evans bought the truck and ran this truck till 1974. And my friend from Kelowna, John Ludbrook, bought the truck in 1974. And John ran it around locally and then he put a bunk on it. In the fullness of time, we'll get into the 80s, and he started doing his own thing with a company called Copytron in Vancouver. And they were um, uh, sales and distribution of photocopiers. And he started running this truck between Vancouver and Toronto. And did that a couple of times a month, right up until I met him, which was around 1989, maybe 1990. I had a 1960 Kenworth at the time, but it was nowhere as nice as this 62. So you'll understand my surprise when he called me one day in 1992. And he said, Jimmy says, you need to buy rose by the way that's the truck's name i said well i i don't know that i would do that john he said well no you need to i said well i don't know that i would he says well and i'm going to give it to you i said well i'm not going to come and get it he says and i will drive it to your house put it in your yard and then fly home because it's your <laughs> truck now so it's it's an interesting story to that point but the part that i didn't know about at that time was that John had liver cancer and was, he only had about six months to live. So I got in a plane and went to Kelowna where he lived and got better acquainted with Rose and paid him cash for it, which is interesting because nobody that's owned this truck has ever had a loan on it in 60 years. Everyone has bought it's paid cash. So I load up Rose and the trailer and all the spare parts, which was probably enough to build two more trucks, and uh, head back for Ontario, where uh, Rose just went right back to work. Uh, I was running um, all over uh, North America at the time with my own company, which was called Jade Transportation, a company that I sold in, in December of 2013. Uh, no idea how many miles are on Rose, but I can tell you that she's been completely restored three times. Uh, John did it in 1990. It was uh, probably a six-month project. And then I got the truck, uh, and I ran it and ran it and ran it. And it was getting kind of war. And I redid it in 1997, I'm going to tell you, completely. Did body paint. Uh, cross members had actually put a roof section in it at that time a guy named Doug Johnson out in Greeley did that great 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 body man well known around here so anyway I just put the truck back to work I retired the truck retired and I uh, restored it again which it's really not finished yet I'll say it's 95% done and uh, I made it a day cab and that's really the story of it. Changed its color and when did this hold? Oh, so so that was that was actually a design of a friend of mine. The bumper flips forward, the hoods lift as they normally do, but then the fenders flip forward to give you access to the engine. So um, as as your viewers will see on the video, it's kind of an interesting thing. I can't take all the credit for it though, because uh, Doug uh, Houston designed all of that. He uh, fabricated a good part of it, and um, and I just finished it and actually made it work. So did was that part of your whole rebuild proj project? Yeah, then? yeah, absolutely, uh -huh. absolutely. That was that was the thing that got it going because I had to repaint 
everything up front and I figured, well, let's, let's just do the whole truck. I was tired of having a bunk on it and I knew I'd never sleep in it again. So off with the bunk. It was a uh, fawn and burgundy for most of its life. It was really pretty and, and I'll tell you, I don't mind saying it. In hindsight, I wish I would have left the color scheme the way it was red because it was, um, this is fine, but that, that color was really distinctive. Like I say, I've had it for 30 years now and it's a, it's a part of the family and it's not a truck that I would sell. Another being a, than being uncomfortable, it was a pretty tough, pretty tough way to do service work. So you know that sometimes it's just a better way, right? And don't look at the motor, it's filthy. Okay guys, don't look at the motor. <laughs> Wow. And and both sides go up like that. Yeah. You know, basically gives you the serviceability of a truck with a bike. That's amazing. I think so. Yeah. I, as I say, it takes a few minutes to open, but yeah. That's better than the alternative. Yeah. Laying on the fender and wrecking the paint. That's really cool, huh? That hood ornament is the original 1933 Packard Goddess of Speed that a friend of mine who's uh, now deceased gave that to me for this truck. And then I fabricated into a rad cap. That's the original Goddess of Speed. I actually, when I, 